Um, it's a paper about uh, price dispersion and competition. That's an old question in microeconomics. And uh, we have an application this afternoon uh, with the price of wine in restaurants in, uh, in several markets worldwide. Yep. Okay, the, the question of price discrimination is often seen as a sign of market power. Uh, power and uh, theoretically there is uh, uh, a relationship between competition and price convergence. Uh, competitions implies price convergence. That's the main theoretical link that we can expect uh, between competition and price conversion. And uh, then concentration implies price dispersion. That's a traditional view in theory. But actually, theory is not so clear, and uh, there are several arguments uh, which imply that uh, this relationship, this positive relationship, is not so uh, so uh, that, that, that on the market you cannot always see this relation between uh, between competition and uh, and price convergence. And uh, the empirical literature reflects this ambiguity. And uh, I just took two in, in this literature, thank you, Olivier. In this literature, uh, I just took two examples about airlines market. And uh, in this paper, oops, sorry. In this paper, for example, okay. In this paper of Stavins in the uh, in the Review of Economy and Statistics in 2001, uh, more intense competition lead to, led to greater price dispersion, for example, but in the same market, airlines tickets, uh, a negative correlation exists between competition and price dispersion. So, the theoretical link is not so clear and the literature, empirical literature, is also not so clear. So, there is, uh, there is, given these empirical studies, there is a room for additional work on this issue. And the purpose of this paper is to give new insight on the link between price dispersion and market concentration for a differentiated market. Uh, this market is wines sold at restaurants. Uh, as far as we know, this analysis constitutes the only one on this market. And uh, you can find some studies, uh, sometimes a lot of studies, uh, notably for airlines, uh, for retail trade, uh, for gasoline also, and a few sectors, but uh, nothing as far as we know, for, for restaurants, for example. And uh, we have a unique data set of uh, wine list because we, uh, we studied uh, 70,000 Bordeaux wines sold in five different markets, as you can see. Uh, Los Angeles, we have London, we have uh, Los Angeles, there, sorry, Hong Kong. We have London, we have Paris, and we have New York. And uh, we have the possibility with uh, this unique data set to analyze, to analyze sorry, the link between price dispersion and concentration. Uh, that's the main purpose of the paper, uh, to analyze this link, but uh, based on, the, on this database, we also can find the determinants of the price at restaurants. It's an old question, it's a question very interesting for journalists, but also uh, for uh, management literature. And uh, as you can see on the Wall Street Journal, it was a paper in 2008, if I remembered well, uh, about cracking the code of restaurant wine pricing. It's, a, it's also an old question, all Eschenfelter has a couple of papers about that, and uh, you can find the literature, some paper from Larry Lockshin, for example, in uh, Australia and in China about this topic. It's not the main, uh, the main purpose of our paper, but we can do uh, something to, to crack the code of restaurant wine pricing, and we will do that. But as I said, the main, the main issue is uh, to study the link between concentration and price dispersion. Uh, in the literature, price dispersion can be analyzed in the cross-section dimension. dimension uh, for example, for the airlines, 
uh, for the sorry for the retail trade or gasoline markets, uh, it's mainly the cross section dimension, which is important with a special special dimension. But in the airlines, yep, in the airlines market, that's the time dimension which is really really important. Um, in the literature also, you can find two main strategies for calcul calculating sorry, the price dispersion. Uh, you can find a Gini and this, a very classical way to, uh, to calculate the price dispersion. <coughs> and th that's uh, particularly uh, suitable for homogeneous market. But you can also find another strategy to measure the price dispersion. And uh, this strategy consists in taking the variance of price residual from a fixed effect equation, a price fixed effect equation. And that's the strategy we will choose uh, to, uh, to run in this uh, paper. The data set is uh, coming from uh, uh, a startup in Bordeaux uh, called Wine Services. They are specialized, as you can see there, in collecting distribution data in all major consumer markets. And especially, we have uh, some data from their restaurant studies. Uh, they surveyed uh, 2,700 restaurants. And uh, our database is uh, coming from this, uh, this data set. So we have. 200, about two, uh, 2,000, sorry, different chateaus in the sample. We have about 10,000 different wine vintage pairs in this sample. And uh, the observations are quite well balanced between the five markets, as you can see, with an exception for, uh, for Los Angeles, where we have only uh, 5,700 uh, observations. But uh, for the for other markets, it's quite balanced with about uh, 15,000 15, observations. Uh, we have also, as you can see there, we have also uh, 907 restaurants in this data set. For each market, uh, each market has been surveyed three times so far, as you can see there for Paris uh, between December to 2011 to December 2013. Uh, it's about the same for the other markets. It's not exactly the same, and we will have to control for uh, this time dimension in the in the in the economic trick analysis. For each wine, we know the vintage, of course. We know. The the name of uh, the chateau, the vintage. Uh, we also know the restaurant or the bar where, mainly the restaurant, uh, where it is sold. And for each restaurant, we know their exact location. We have the address and the G, uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, we also have the neighborhood and we have the ambience of uh, the restaurants. Uh, what means uh, the ambience? There is a a classification uh, coming from wine services, a startup uh, which I mentioned, and uh, we have this kind of oops, this kind of class. Uh, we have the bar ambience, but it's it's we we can neglect this uh, this category. Mainly, we have some fine dining restaurants, as you can see, some gastro restaurants. Uh, the sum of of uh, the two class there is uh, more than uh, fifty percent. Uh, we have a white table clause, uh, which is. Uh, Actually, it's about the same that a gastro or fine dining, that's something like that. And uh, we have also some undetermined uh, restaurant. So for us, that's a, a variable of horizontal differentiation. 
We have the quality of the restaurants, so maybe there is a, a, a controversy about the quality of restaurants when it is proxied by the Michelin stars. Uh, I think that's the best, uh, the best proxy for the, the quality of our restaurants, but uh, we can discuss about that. And uh, we have the quality of the wine list uh, with a proxy which is quite controversial, also, uh, it's a Wine Spectator Awards, uh, where is Robin? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know what you think about that, but... Uh, uh, okay, we will use it and you will see the result. <laughs> So, uh, some descriptive statistics about this, uh, this sample. Uh, as you can see there, oh, as you can see there, Los Angeles represents uh, the cheaper market and uh, it, it, it looks quite uh, important uh, compared to Hong Kong, which is the most expensive market. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what I wanted to say. Um, okay, that's okay. Some other descriptive statistics. Uh, Interesting. Th that's just an, an example for uh, the five first growths in Bordeaux, Margot, Petrus, Mouton, Latour, Aubryon, and the outstanding vintage uh, 1961. As you can see, you have uh, a max-min ratio, uh, which is quite important depending on the wine. It's uh, particularly important for Petrus, for example. And uh, in, in each case, I think uh, Hong Kong is the most expensive place uh, compared to, uh, to, to Los Angeles. Uh, concerning the methodology, we use a multiplicative heterosedasticity model, uh, like Harvey in 1976. And uh, that's an interesting model, because you have a, a, the price there, the price of a good, uh, whatever the good, in level, depending of uh, a vector of independent variable, of course. But uh, you can expect some heterosedasticity, because the variance of the price then the variance of the residual, theoretically, uh, contains a vector of explicative or independent variables, which is, which could be the same as the vector x, but not necessarily. And uh, the price has some uh, some explanatory variable, but the the dispersion of the price has also some uh, explanatory variable, so that's interesting. And the uh, the variance of the residual is the price dispersion measure for us. So the method consists then in a two-step regression. The first stage uh, consists in an OLS regression of the first equation in order to obtain the residuals, of course. And the second stage consists in a, in a regression of the log of the residual squared as an estimation of the variance of the theoretical residual. So it's something uh, quite traditional in this literature, and uh, you can find all the detailed methodology in Harvey uh, 1977. Uh, and particularly, you have to look page 462. Uh, so, Lewis uh, for gasoline adopted uh, this methodology and uh, he, he, he wrote that, that it's particularly suitable because uh, as you can mm, as you can read, then one would only consider price dispersion to be present in a differentiated product, and that's uh, important words here, uh, in a differentiated product market if price variation remained even after controlling for these differences in consumer willingness to pay for one product over another. So uh, that's a good methodology to use, I think, following Lewis 2008 uh, to, to, to address this issue. 
So in uh, our study, the first stage is uh, the price in level, not in log, as uh, a price uh, against the only a fixed effect for wine, for vintage, for restaurants, and for time. You you remember maybe the three years, uh, the three dates of observation of uh, wine prices in restaurants for each market. So it's a very simple, very simple model. And from this model, we will keep the residual to go directly to the second stage. So the regression of the log of the residual squared. Uh, here the the variables are concentration, of course. It's a variable of interest in this equation. Uh, we use two concentration variables. Uh, times wine I found in the considered market or neighborhood. Uh, actually, we do not use the neighborhood uh, at this time. We just control by a, 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 a dummy variable for neighborhood and we just consider the market, and time same category wine found in the list of uh, the restaurant J. Uh, another variable is uh, restaurant ambience, of course, ambience as an horizontal differentiation uh, variable, and Michelin star uh, wine spectator award, award as a vertical differentiation variable. Um, as for the results, first, First equation is just to crack the code of restaurants. Uh, wine price, it's not the first stage exactly. Okay, it's okay. Uh, it's not the first stage of the equation. It's just a, a kind of naive model, if you, if you want, uh, with the price in log. And uh, we, we find uh, no effect uh, of the concentration in the neighborhood, and this is the neighborhood, uh, to the price level at this point. But we find uh, some effect of the vertical differentiation variables, as you can see, and especially the number of uh, Michelin stars. And uh, the, the more the number of stars, uh, the higher the price, of course. Uh, we have some effect about the uh, the market, uh, the reference is Hong Kong, and uh, the prices are lower than in Hong Kong, as I ever said. So, more interesting, maybe, uh, the second stage and the price dispersion. Uh, we have a positive impact of uh, the number, the, 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 the times wine found in market, in the city, I mean, and the Times same category found in the wine list, so the internal competition in the wine list of uh, the restaurant J. What does it mean? It means that uh, competition implies uh, higher dispersion. It's not the theoretical traditional result. Uh, the more the the, the more the competition, the higher the competition. Sorry the higher the dispersion of price. And uh, that's really interesting. And uh, we, we have to interpret this result in, uh, in, in, in the next slide. Uh, the results for the other variable are not very clear. Uh, even if the, st the Michelin stars have also a positive impact on the price dispersion, but the other variable, like the ambience uh, and the table is continued there, uh, is not so clear because uh, we have sometimes positive effect, negative effect, and uh, th th there is no clear results uh, from, this, uh, from this table. Ah. Okay, just uh, a quick synthesis and, and interpretation of this result. Uh, first, we find we found a positive correlation between concentration and price dispersion, as I said. So maybe rising number of the same wine correlated to the number of restaurants in the in a in a market in the neighborhood, of course, uh, increase the cost of searching information for the consumer. So when you face a market with a lot of restaurants and a lot of wine and the same wine uh, available in several in numerous restaurants in the market, it's really costly to find the information about each price in each restaurant for the same wine. So 
because it's a search, it's a search market, uh, and the cost for searching information is quite high, you can have uh, a pricing strategy for the restaurant and uh, some pricing discrimination by restaurant and uh, they earn from the consumer heterogeneity and these search costs. Uh, secondly, positive impact of differentiation on price dispersion. Uh, we saw that differentiation is a vector of price discrimination, uh, especially vertical differentiation. And on the other side, vertical differentiation is uh, associated to different marginal costs. And even in a perfectly competitive market, uh, you can have this kind of price dispersion because the marginal cost is not the same in every restaurant. So it's quite a traditional result in, uh, in, in, in this kind of uh, literature, but uh, it's a little bit heterodox, however. Uh, to conclude, okay, so, <laughs> so just to conclude, uh, some limitation. Uh, first, uh, we have to try several other concentration indexes to have uh, to, to ensure the robustness of this result, of course, and for sure the market level, the city as a whole could be too large and we have to use a narrower geographical area based on GPS coordinates because we have this information and we didn't uh, use it uh, actually. So we have to go further in, uh, in uh, addressing this issue. Thank you very much.